EA Sports. What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. In this one, I wanted to show off a new coin making method that I found out because they had the gingerbread set and it was really good. A lot of people made a lot of coins off of it, but they took it away. So I had to look for a new way to make coins. And this method is pretty good. It's not as good, but I'm still making coins from it. I'm just showing you my team right now to show you that I've upgraded it a lot. Let me pull up my notes real quick and tell you who I've upgraded. I got the 91 Pat Willis. I had a power-up pass on him, but I was able to buy his card with some of the profit I made. 240k there. I bought Moss. That's 320k. I powered up Aaron Donald. That takes a lot of training. Of course, getting all of the 49er heroes because I did the set. I also powered up Buckner. I pulled a 91 Howie Long and fully upgraded him. I pulled Team of the Week pieces for the Tyreek. So I just went ahead and built him. And it only cost me around 70k. And he's about 170k. And then after that, I fully upgraded Tyreek. So I've done a lot to my team. On top of that, I pulled Armstead three times. And I do show the back of the card so you know that I got it from a pack opening. So if you're looking at my numbers at the top, like my coins and training, it doesn't really show the story of how much I've profited. I profited a whole lot if I sell those Armsteads and get rid of cards I don't really need on my team. I'm just kind of stacking up right now. But if I sell all that, I profited a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the method. I'm showing you it in the background right now, and I'll explain it and break it down. And I'll even put instructions in the description. If you have any trouble following it, you can slow it down or ask me questions. Also, if anybody wants to see just like 20 minutes of the method without any edits, I can do that as well. I chose this clip for a specific reason, because during this like 20 minutes of me pulling these cards and putting them into sets, I didn't really get that lucky. But I still profited and I was still able to come out of it on top because I was smart about it. And I will walk you through the instructions right now. This method is using the Super Bowl President reroll set. If you pull an 83, that goes into the Super Bowl Present set, which gives you the 96 at the end of it. If that set is full of 83s, then your 83s will go into the 85-86 set. And I know in this video I'm quick selling the 83s. But that was during a time where I wasn't doing that. When I started putting the 83s into the 85-86 set, I noticed more profit. Next up are the 85s. Every time you pull one of these, you always want to put it into the 87-88 set. If you pull an 87, that will go into the 89-90 set. And if you pull an 88, you sell it. Those go for anywhere between 28k and around like 40k, depending on what card it is. When you pull at 87, you're either going to be putting that into a team of the year set, whether it's offense or defense. And then if you already have it there, you're going to be putting it into the 89 to 90 set. I would put an 87 in the team of the year first and only focus on one team of the year set at a time. If you're doing two and you pull like an 89 and a 91 or something like that, and you're putting that into the other set that you have half completed, and then you have another one that's like missing just one, that's using up cards that you could put in a different set that could make you coins or training back faster. Okay, so say you have an 87 in your team of the year, and then you've used three 87s to get yourself an 89 to 90. If you pull an 89 and it's at training value, you want to put that into the team of the year set. If you already have an 89 in your team of the year set, then you can go ahead and add that to the 91 to 92 set. If it's an 89 and it's higher than training value, then you want to sell it. And if you get lucky in the 89 to 90 exchange, then you want to take that 90 and you pretty much always want to sell that because it's always going to be higher than an 89. You can turn around and buy 89s on the market for 34k when you can sell a training value 90 for around 45k. Now, if you're just going to be lazy with it, you don't really care about the extra 4k, which I do a lot then you can go ahead and just put that 90 training value card into the 91-92 upgrade set. But if it's a 90 that's really good value, just go ahead and sell it. If you pull an 89, that's going to go into the Super Bowl present set, the one that gives you a full 96 at the end of it. The only time I wouldn't put it in that set is if I just needed one card to complete a team of the year set, it being an 89. 
If you're out of training for the re-rolls and all you need is an 89 to complete one of the team of the years, what you can do is go back into the Super Bowl present set and then go ahead and take that 89 out of there, put it in the team of the year, get your card, then you can quick sell that to get back into the re-rolls. And lastly, if you pull a 91 or a 93, that's going to go into your team of the year set, help you complete that. If you pull extra 91s and 93s, you want to hold on to them so that when you complete a team of the year, the next one will be easier. And you never want to quick sell them. You never want to sell them on the market because they're going for training value. It's not going to get you a lot of coins in return. And you definitely don't want to quick sell the 91s and 93s because the amount of training you get out of that is not going to get you that many rerolls. If you think about a 91, that's just two. You definitely want to save every 91 and 93 that you can get out of the rerolls because those are the most expensive pieces of the team of the year set. And sometimes you'll be on a heater, you'll pull like three 93s and you won't pull any 91s. And then after a while, it'll start to switch and you'll not pull any 93s and you start to pull a lot of 91s. So if you save those cards, it makes doing all the team of the year sets easier. In summary, the main sets we're going to be using are Super Bowl Present, Team of the Year, and also Upgrade Exchange sets. If you pull 88s, sell them always, even if they're training value because they're just more value than 87s. If you pull 90s, you always want to sell those. If you pull 92s out of the 91-92 exchange, you always want to sell those. 91s, as long as they're not going for a way higher than what the Super Bowl present cards are going for, then you can go ahead and use it for the team of the year set. You want to use your brain, you know. Just think smart because you can end up losing a lot if you're careless with this, especially with the higher end cards. Like for example, if you pull a 91 out of the exchange set, if he sells for around 70-ish K, 72, 73, and you can buy a Super Bowl present card for around 60, What's the point of selling that card? It's only going to return about one or 2000 if you have to go and then buy another 91 to complete a Team of the Year set. Just go ahead and put that 91 into the Team of the Year set. But you definitely want to check prices because you could end up pulling a 91 that just happens to go into a Legend set or something like that, and it's a higher-end piece, and it could go for over 100 k or closer to that, maybe around 92 ish but if you sell that, then you're getting around 80-something K return. And then buying a Super Bowl present 91 will only be 60. You'll be netting around 20 K there. Another example I can give you for the Team of the Year cards, you might pull one that goes for around 340 But when you sell that, the tax is going to take away 30 k which is going to return you 300 k And then when you need training, you're going to have to turn around and buy a 96 anyway, which is around 300 k so take sales tax into account as well. I'd say the main three points are to check prices for everything. Keep in mind sales tax. And then lastly, keep in mind what cards you have in what sets because you might be able to take one card out of another set to put into a different one to complete it. So you don't have to waste your coins and you can keep the rerolls going. Right here on screen is the first Armstead I pulled. I'm just showing highlights now because I wanted to show you the method first and show you that you're not always going to pull crazy stuff. But now I'll show you the crazy stuff because sometimes you'll go on heaters. Sometimes you'll lose a little bit and then sometimes you'll win a little bit. But if you keep this method going and as long as you're smart with it, you will end up profiting. And you don't have to like the video right now, but when you do end up profiting from this and maybe even pull a tyrant, come back, like the video, and subscribe let the people know in the comments how this worked for you. Also, if you have any questions, you can use the comments for that as well. If there's anything you're confused about, I'll answer it, or maybe even somebody else will. I love giving advice. That's why I do YouTube in the first place. So if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask, and I will help you understand. There's my second, I believe, Eric Armstead. Ended up pulling three. I think I'm going to keep one and sell the other two today and go ahead, buy some training, and try to pull that Tyron. I think since I started this method two days ago, my best pulls have been obviously the limited cards, but I also pulled this card right here, the Richard Sherman. That card was going for 300 k when I pulled him. I also pulled Deion Sanders, Mutt 10 card. He was going for around 300 k as well, 
and then I pulled Bo Jackson today, this morning. He was going for a little bit over 200 k So this will definitely return things to you. And a last little tip I can give you guys before I wrap the video up. The next series is going to be coming out, which means pack odds are going to go up. Better cards are going to be coming out, which means the cards that are out right now are going to go down. The only cards I don't see going down very much are the newest, newest cards, like maybe the present and the team of the year. But other than that, if you're a beginner and you want to do this method, if you're confident that you're not going to mess this up and maybe make too many mistakes, maybe quick sell cards you shouldn't, and things like that, if you stick to the guidelines, if you're a beginner and you want to sell your team off, as long as it's a card you bought, that might be a smart idea. If it's training, keep it. If it's a NAT card, keep it. But if it's a card that you bought yourself, you can sell it. You can start this method. Forget about the house rules because if you're a beginner or a budget team, you're going to be facing God Squads anyway. And the return is a NAT 95, which is not that much. Get your coin gains, get your training gains, and make that the most important thing. When Series 5 comes out, you can buy your team back for cheaper, maybe even better than what it was when you sold it. And that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know if this video helped you. Subscribe for more Madden content, and I will see you guys in the next video.